I've always found the Enneagram to be really fascinating and have tons of amazing depth of insights and ways of changing and improving your life. And in this video, I want to talk about the shadow side of the type nine, because I'm a type nine, in the form of forgetting yourself and how to avoid it through taking right action. What's up, Legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help geeks, gamers, and creatives to play life better. And I realize like, I'm off-centered. I'm sliding around here, and I don't know what to do about it. And I think that's a metaphor for my own life. And so I'm using the Enneagram in this video to talk about how to improve your life. Uh, because it's one, it's one way of slicing the cake, one way of understanding yourself. And I know INFPs are generally nines or fours or sixes, and we got a lot of INFPs here. So I hope that this video will help out. So first up, what does it mean to be a type nine? Uh, without getting really into the whole detail of the Enneagram, because this is going to be a short video, hopefully. Um, basically, type nines are characterized by being um, very calm, very centered, um, very altruistic, helping other people, uh, passive, don't want to rock the boat, don't want to shake things up. Um, and because of that, we often struggle with expressing our own needs. We are self-forgetting in a lot of ways. And we, we go through this self-narcotization where we, we kind of just like numb ourselves down and, and go into the comfort zone to escape any strong emotions, especially anger. This is a big theme throughout my life. And I only realized it because I started tracking how often things kind of like irk me and irritate me and, and make me upset and how often I just instantly delete those and shut those off and, and escape into another emotion or just dissociate from the situation. And it's not, it's not always bad, okay? The, the problem is when things, when you do these things too often, right? When it becomes a crutch, when it becomes um, a habit that is causing other issues in your own life. And if that sounds similar to you, if it sounds familiar, if it resonates, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. So part of what brings out this shadow side of the type nine is a fear of being isolated and forgotten. Um, I know this, like, I can pinpoint a specific instance in my life where this, this habit, this behavior, this thought pattern was, was really triggered and, and the inciting event, I suppose. And that was um, through my parents' divorce. You know, like when that happened, I, I had this, not conscious at the time, but I had this fear of being alone, being left alone, being forgotten, you know, being not part of the family. And, and so in order to deal with that, the strategy that nines create is to be, uh, to be able to blend into any situation because we don't have like a strict, clear, defining line of our shape of who we are then we can just kind of blend in with this group and this group and we can become honorary groups or honorary members of any group um and that is that's a defense mechanism right by not uh polarizing by not making people upset or anything like that by not raising these strong emotions within people we're not something that people should fear right we're just okay with whatever and so then we can kind of uh, sneak in and slide into different groups they have a, a phrase a saying in japan about the the nail that sticks out the highest is the first one to get hammered down and we're definitely not the one that stands out as type nines so how can we best overcome this how can we you know, deal with this as, as the main reason for why we are not satisfied in our lives, right? Like there comes a point where you, you need to understand who you are and you need to take actions in order to satisfy your impact on the world, your ability to change things, to make things better for other people. Because as a type nine, uh, we're, we're very good at taking other people's perspectives, taking other people's sides, understanding what they're going through, um, and, and mediating for other people and being the peacekeeper, right? Or peace creator. And that is our, one of our superpowers. So we need to live into that. Like we have the, the kind of duty to live into that. I almost laughed at the word that I said duty, but uh, too mature for that. So how can we best overcome this fear? Well, we need to take right action. For an INFP, if you're not an INFP, um, you're going to have to do a little bit of mind work to, to figure this out. But for an INFP, it's, it's really leaning into 
the convictions of introverted feeling, what is what is so important to you that just it gets you excited, it, it riles you up, lean into that and then bring it into action through extroverted thinking. So how you bring it into right action is by strategizing, by setting a goal, by measuring things, by figuring out how to actually enact these things into real life. And it can be draining, it can be tiring, it can be just exhausting just thinking about it, right? Like how do I make these massive changes in the world? Well, you gotta go one step at a time. How do you slay a dragon? One attack at a time, right? You can't just win the game in one foul swoop, right? You gotta, you gotta take the steps. You gotta make it a habit to take right action and to do the things that are important to you. And one way of doing that is to leverage your emotions like attach attach a meta emotion on top of it right i'm feeling angry well i know that because i'm feeling angry like one of my values has been violated and i need to actually take actions to right that wrong i need to do stuff you need to do stuff to make the world a better place at least for you right but probably for you and other people if you feel some sort of way about it then um you know somebody else does too you want to make it good for you and good for other people as well not just good for other people and you'll figure it out like you it, it won't kill you so it's fine it's okay just let it slide don't don't do that don't do that trust me from my experience that's not a great place to be so it's important that you define your values define what's important to you listen to yourself stop dissociating stop like when when i got in like fights and arguments and stuff like that in the past I would literally blur my vision. Like I would just zone out. I would go to sleep, um, which you might resonate with that, um, in order to just just pacify those strong emotions. Don't do that. It's it's not the right way of going about it, right? You can shift the emotions. You can change them, right? Feel gratitude for them existing, being a sign, a signal for you to take different actions and do something about it. Take the right action, not the comfortable action. It's not about feeling good. It's about being right. Like it, it might, it, it'll feel good to ignore it for a little while, but that's not the right thing to do. And you know that deep down too. So make it a habit of when that comes up to try something new, to do something new with that emotion, with that sign so that you can take a different action to get you a different result, which is going to emerge into a better life. And another simple thing that you can do is to focus on grounding techniques, right? Be in your body, you know, just center yourself, feel your toes, feel, you know, what, what your toes are on or your socks, right? Like what you're standing on, feel your pant legs, right? Feel just your clothes on your body, feel the, uh, the temperature of the air going in and out, feel the wind, feel the breeze, right? Notice the things connected to your sensory realm and to your body because a lot of times we're we're just here we're, we're somewhere else right and it's it's definitely not in the body <laughs> it's an important place to be your body's pretty important right paying attention to what's going on is quite important um, i highly recommend being in your body now does that mean it's going to be easy no it's just you, you haven't been practicing that for so long right so it's it's obviously going to be something that's going to take time and take effort, but the benefits of being more present, being more grounded, uh, being able to stand up for yourself and take the right steps, right? Do the things that are important to you so that you actually live a better life that you're not regretting, I think outweigh the frustration that comes from not noticing on time, not being in your body, um, and kind of that, that struggle of implementing a new habit. So what I'm suggesting here is that you get triggered, that you get upset, you get frustrated about your current situation in life and use that as the fuel to take actions to better your life so that you can impact other people, so that you can have better relationships, so that you can bring your gifts, your superpowers into the world. And if that was helpful, check out this video as well. Let me know down below in the comments what stood out for you and what you're going to do about it. Keep up the lifelong quest and good luck, have fun. Peace.